for joining me in the studio today. The thing that everybody's talking about currently is wash your hands. You can't go anywhere, the new year, wash your hands. So I thought, well, why don't we do something with mixed media and metal embossing about our hands. First, I'm going to start prepping my canvas. And when that is busy drying the first layer, I will move on to the metal embossing. I'm going to do the project on a 8x8 canvas. What I've done this far is I have made a sketch of the hand that I would like to do in my um, journal where I basically keep track of everything I do. And the next thing I did after that is I went to my silhouette and I designed, went to do the design space and I made a template for this, cut it out. So there is a PDF drawing for this. Link below this video, you're more than welcome just to click on it and download it for you and you can use it. <clears throat> the heart or the flower, I would like to put something in the, with embossing in there and I haven't decided which one I'm going to use. The other thing that I want to do is when I look at my stencil, I think I would like to put the hand over on this side and then I'm also going to do metal embossing. The, this is a stencil from a mic, can't really see there very well, but I'm also going to do three of these small little hands and I might just put them down on the side. That's where I'm leaning towards, do some modeling paste. I don't want too much texture so that I'm just going to use a light modeling paste. I really like working with the silicon tools when I do my... Um, when I add my modeling paste. What I'm going to do is at random spaces, I'm going to put this down. And the reason for that is just, I would just like to have some texture underneath, not just have everything flat. Because layers, that is basically what mixed media is about. So once I'm done with this, I am just going to put this off to the side to dry. Usually when I would work just with the canvas, this is a time where I would get out a heat gun and quickly heat set this to, so that it can dry quicker. But for now, I am just going to put it aside and I'm going to move on to the um, metal embossing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tape my stencil on the front of the um, my piece of pewter. Today I'm working with pewter. I always mark the back of my pewter so that I know where that is. And I have to do this at an angle. So I'm going to tape this down. It is just when I trace it, you don't have to, it does not move. You, if you do not have the stencil, that's perfectly fine. You can draw it freehand and then you can just um, work it from there as well. I will do a small little demo for you um, on another, on the side here, if you don't have the stencil, it's just the stencil is making it so much easier and faster to work. So just for interest sake, when you do not have a stencil, I'm just going to do the heart here. You're going to draw the heart and then, or the hand, you're going to trace it actually, again on the front. And then what you're going to do is from the back on your paper pad, you are going to use your Teflon tool or any tool that you prefer, a stylus can work as well. It's just, I prefer the Teflon because it's nice and smoothing. And you are just going to trace it again on the line and it is going to pop out in the front. So, and from there, it all depends on the effect that you want, what you want to do. So for me, I'm just quickly going to trace this. So it's, I just trace it with a pencil and just make sure that when you do trace that you can actually see where you have traced in the um, thread. Now I'm going to remove my paper pad and I'm going to be working on the hard surface and I'm going to use my paper stamp and the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to push this out. So basically I am just outlining it again on the inside now or on the back 
using my paper stump. And I'm just going to color this in, almost the same as coloring. And when you look at that, you can actually see how it has gone in there. So when you remove the stencil, you will able to see the fingers. Okay. So the same with your heart. You would have just gone in and after you have relined it, you would have used your paper stump. Go in. And there you can also, I don't know if you can see, but it, it's also a race. Oops. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Teflon tool again and I am just going to go as close as what I can to my stencil edges just to neaten it off because it does make a difference whether you neaten this off or not. And again, there is another video that I will also link below, which is focusing on how to work with stencils. And there is another one as well, that how you get different effects, whether you tape your stencil on the front or on the back of your project or your pewter. So there you can see I have done the outline so I'm going to go back in with my paper stump and I'm just really going to go and push that up against the edges of the stencil again. And there you go, all done with the stencil part. So we're going to remove our stencil now. And as you can see, you have this nice raised area. So again, with your paper stump, you are just going to go around and you are going to flatten your background. And once you've done that, you can either use your um, refiner or you can use your Teflon tool, depending how and which one is working best for you. I'm going to use my refiner. So the refiner, as you can see, has that little bit of a, almost like a curved edge to it. So you, you're really going to go nice and cozy in onto that line and refine it. So there you go, and there is the hand. And now I am going to put my heart in. I've decided to go with a heart just because we need some love at this time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape my heart on the back. So this is gonna be a high relief this heart it will be which means it will be standing out more than what the hand will be raised <clears throat> and i'm going to come back onto my paper pad and i am going to outline it I'm actually going to use the opposite side. I'm going to remove my heart stencil or the stencil. And the next step what I'm going to do is now I'm going to work on an, um, a piece of leather. 
so that's another surface and again the surface video will be linked below so I'm going to take my um, Teflon tool and I'm gonna go oh and I'm working on the wrong side no I'm working on the right side from the back so I'm going to work from the back with my Teflon tool and I'm going to go as close as what I can to that line and reline my heart just 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 on the inside so when you look at that you can see it is a race more than that so this is going to be a little bit difficult because you've already raised the hands but with a stencil but you have to do high relief last because if we first did the high relief and then tried to do the hand with the stencil we would have flattened the high relief we can always just push out the um, hands again so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Teflon tool for now to refine around the heart you know what it actually have I think I'm going to leave that there. And this is where you're going to turn it around again and you're going to come in and you can use either your paper stamp or you can use your finger and you are just going to push it out a little bit more. I'm going to use my finger today. And I'm also going to use my paper stump just to get rid of that line out there. And again, you're just going to come in with your paper stump and you are going to smooth it around or flatten it around. And actually, now I've decided I don't like that that I was going to leave there. So I'm just going to come in with my refiner. And I am going to go work all around and refine it. my hand that I have done that I am going to put onto my canvas. Rolling paste still haven't dried yet or my texture paste. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the um, metal embossing of these other three little hands. So the stencil I'm using for these are from a Mick in South Africa. They are based in South Africa. This is a very old stencil. So let me just see how I'm going to put that out. This out to utilize as much of the sputer is what I can because I'm going to cut out the hands so basically what I'm going to do now is I am going to repeat exactly what I've done with the hands I'm going to trace it on the paper pad and then push it through on the hard surface with my paper stump outline it with the teflon tool tip nice and up against the stencil and then from there I'm going to remove the stencil work still on the hard surface on the front then flatten it around and um, neaten and tidy it up. Pencil the other two um, hands as well. The one if I don't know if you can see there it's a little bit it's so reflective the pewter but I have actually done this one over where I have started off showing how you can do the um, the heart or the hand if you do not have a stencil but now I have all these marks here so when you have something like that you can have one of uh, one of two choices you can either take another piece of pewter or you can utilize that so what I've decided to do is I'm actually while my stencil is still on I am going to make scratch marks from the back so this hand is definitely going to have texture and I'm just going to start and I am going to randomly just go and scratch all over here. Yeah. Okay. 
missed a spot. So again, I'm just going to use my paper stump and I am just going to flatten all around because we've already done the refining. So if this is a look that you like, you can put texture in all the hands. So there you can see you have the texture in there where those are just the shiny ones. I have dried this modeling paste with my heat gun because I just could not wait any longer. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the background. I really like working in um, grays and black with a little bit of green. Um, I also add some other colors, but the gray and the black is mostly what I work with. So I have, what I've done is on my palette, I've already squirted out some paint. So I have Mars black, which is very black, ivory black, which is not as black, a basic gray and a white and the white is a titanium white. So I'm just gonna random start painting and I'm really going to do a dry brushing. Um, but you can always go in later and just see where this leads me. So I've started off with the black. And this is the nice thing about doing mixed media. There is really no right way or wrong way. And when you don't like something, you just add another layer on it. It's really forgiving and it gives you that not overthinking because I think sometimes we really overthink it, um, what we are doing. I think this is how I'm going to, where I'm going to stop. So what I've done is I've done the um, ivory black, I've done the moss black, I've done basic gray, and then I just touch it up with some white. And that's where I'm going to stop. I'm going to leave this to dry, and then I'm going to come in with my green. The next thing I'm going to do is to decide where I'm going to bring in my green. And I know this is my hand that is cut out of pewter or which I still need to cut, but that is the template that I've used. I think I'm going to place that there. And I know I'm going to put the three small hands that we've made um, over on this side. And I'm going to start adding this. And I really just go in, dab, 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 dab. The nice thing about this is if you look at it and you remove the stencil and, or you can sketch, um, it's just easier when you do use the stencil. So you can cut this out and use it as a stencil, the sketch. If you don't like it, all you do is you just paint over it. So because I haven't really paid attention to the um, the outside or the sides, I'm just going to go in with the green that is still on my brush and I'm just going to take and fall in with you. some of the black and the grey did transfer over to the sides but there's some spots where it's oh like there it is pretty much white by just adding this little bit of a colour um, to that it's Cleaning your brush and it does double duty as well. So now when somebody looks at your um, canvas from the side, it's not going to be this white. This is how it looks this far. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to do some patina on the hand. I have fold my hands um, with beeswax. Whenever you do high relief, you need to fold it. Otherwise, it's just going to flatten all, or if you press against it. And then what I've done is I've gone in with the patina and then I have polished it back to a shine. There you can see the difference from where I didn't polish that well compared to where I did polish. Um, well, put some tape on you so that I can actually adhere it to the canvas. So... I work with the Suquan tape. You you will always see me working with the Suquan tape. The rolls are more economical, but they don't always fit the exact size that you need. So it is between the rolls and the sheets. And once it's done, I'm just going to get my 
small little cutting board out or cutting mat. And I'm just going to cut that down. Okay. Around the hands, because I only want the hands. I don't need the rest of um, these, because if I'm going to put the whole thing on, um, this is the effect that I'm going to get, and that's not what I was looking for. So let me grab my tools for this. Okay, so I have gathered my glass. You can also use um, a cutting mat if you want to. I just prefer using the glass. And I've got my tool, which is very sharp. Oh, and this is the spray that I've used to spray it. And when you do spray as well, don't go like you are spray painting, just go zoop, 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 shush, shush, shush. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but yeah, that is how you do. So the first thing I'm just going to start and I'm going to go all around and I have added now my tape. So I usually do this after I've added my tape. You can also do this before you add the tape, but then you will have to go back in and to cut the tape and you can actually feel when it goes through it is a slow process and um, so yeah when you do always try and cut towards you and never away from you and work in small sections at a time it is just easier to do it that way I've cut through the um, pewter at some spots but I did not cut through the um, the double-sided tape, the backing, and that's where I'm having this trouble now. So, yeah, things like this do happen. Okay, those ones I can, I'm starting to look from the back now, just to get a better idea. And it seems like here is where that. Ah, there you go. And there is my hand. Everything is cut out and now it's time to assemble. Just get that out of the way and bring my little canvas over. Oh, I can take the glass out there underneath this wall. So now it's basically just spacing where I would like to put my hands. I have more or less an idea from when I planned this. And I'm using the one that has the um, texture in the middle so that my top and my bottom one is the same. And now it's just for gluing, but I don't, uh, something is... Uh, okay, I know something just look askew for me, but when I look down, I immediately realize I have an even number and always uneven numbers does work best. So I have the four there and two there. So I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is I'll use this stencil. I actually put my placings back there and I'm going to do another one of these little hands um okay yeah i think i'm going to put it right there and again i'm going to use the green let me just grab another paintbrush a dry paintbrush because i don't want to use a wet one now and i'm just going to go in exactly the same as before i'm just going to just see placement there yep yeah, i'm going there And so I'm going to go in and I'm going to dab, 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 dab. Just make sure that it's good. Yep, I think I like that. Oh yeah, that is going to make a huge difference. And I'll work around that to make sure. Oh yes, I like that. So I'm going to move, this is going to be slightly. Oh yeah, that makes a huge difference for me. 
Okay, so now you're actually seeing the things upside down. I will remember to put my to take the next one from the right way. And now it is really just peeling off and putting everything together. So you're just going to cut out, remove that. Actually do it this way and then you can see. And especially those sharp edges, just make sure that you really get them in there. And there my name is done. So I will give this about another day or so to completely dry. I have speed dried it in between. But um, yeah, I think it came out very nice. So there you go. Thank you for visiting my studio today. I hope you had as much fun as what I did. And I look forward to your next visit. Have yourself an awesome day.